The world of the vibe coder is going to find this very frustrating because it's going to slow them down. Mm -hmm. And the idea of having gone from seeing outputs in 20 minutes to an hour to seeing outputs at the end of a six hour documentation session will be inherently frustrating. A repository with linted code that had two, three, four hundred unit tests, automation tests, an architecturally separate front end and back end, infrastructure as code. And I think that any startup that isn't leveraging this build methodology is going to find it very hard to compete. You know, the vast majority of, for example, Y Combinator startups are using AI tooling to, to, to build much, if not all of their code. Um, a statistic I don't want to misquote, but some, you know, incredibly high percentage of, of startups in Y Combinator using tools like this. Um, it just gives that sort of competitive edge and the world of, of building product just looks so different now because anybody can show up with a vibe coded prototype and, and show something shiny to investors, but actually transitioning it into something that would scale to the first even 500 or 1000 users is a very different question. Um, and I, I feel like spec driven is like the, the methodology for doing this. Yeah, and and I think it's 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 interesting. I see when I see spec driven approaches, and I see kind of more prompt driven approaches. You almost like start looking at a prompt driven approach being a very prototype style way of doing things. I've even known someone to start with a prompt driven uh, approach, and they send their kind of like Claude logs or whatever it is over and say, "Look, build me a, a spec based on these prompts. You know from my prompts where my intents are. You can see from the code that's been generated what has been built, what I'm happy with. Uh, build a spec." that represents this and I, and I and i guess kind of like do you feel like that if you were to go like go fully vibe in like prompts uh without without building a spec does do, do you feel like that would be like a strong limiter for people who actually want to go much further much closer to production those who want to scale ai within their yeah. organizations but as you've probably gathered, like that's kind of the framework of how I think of things that have purely been prompted. Like that's not to say that you couldn't construct a perfect prompt that mm -hmm. actually encapsulates all of the context from your specs and just perfectly right sizes your context window such that it's built, you know, task by task, a bunch of different, um, a, a bunch of different smaller stories in just, you know, very well-crafted prompts. That's definitely possible. But the methodology of spec-driven with the combination of a framework makes you more likely to be successful. Yeah. Um, what's also interesting is like, you know, is spec-driven what the future of AI native engineering looks like? Like, I'm mm -hmm. not actually that dogged on the fact that it is. I'm not completely convinced. Um, it feels as though Cursor in particular has been slow to adopt a lot of the primitives and have instead gone through the <clears throat> their, their recent release with plan mode feels like a, a, a spec similar to spec driven or spec driven compatible way of operation, but it's not exactly that. Um, so like, you know, it feels like the best approximation right now how to work with these models, this 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 spec driven methodology and also the BMAT framework itself. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that, you know, next year that's that that's what things are going to look like. My uh i if I've learned one thing in the world of the in the kind of whirlwind that's been the last nine months, um, it is that my crystal ball is inherently faulty and I will make terrible <laughs> yeah. who knows. Yeah, uh, the crystal ball will, will be. I, I saw an eight ball uh, the other day where it's an LLM. It's an LLM uh, implemented eight ball, which is like, oh yeah, everything, everything's everything's going in the future. It's uh, the crystal Does ball. Will... Repeatedly say you're. Absolutely... You're absolutely right. <laughs> so so. When we when we think about how LLMs, you know, t typically are are kind of like better with the the more structured specs, uh, with with kind of like clear requirements. When we think about those specifications or those systems that are poorly specified, what do they become? Do they become something which just you know holds technical debt, or are they now a liability uh, because because of the way an LLM is gonna is is essentially gonna implement that and and, and make assumptions? Yeah, it's a, an interesting kind of question isn't it like what be becomes of technical debt does mm. you know do we have this new thing that is spec debt or requirements debt or you know inadequate requirements because when you think about a tech debt surely should at least fade into the background um because it's now easier to tackle backlogs of tech debt through agentic coding right mm -hmm. you know the, the sort of drudgery of well actually it doesn't feel like drudgery sometimes it's really rewarding but but the the art of like eliminating tech debt is now much easier 
to to go after with an agentic coding system typically so you know does that become really important um, when you can solve for tech debt much easier and in fact it's actually something that's not really aligned to what you wanted to build that becomes a you know the problem so mm. like P poorly defined requirements um does it become harder after going through you know three four days worth of of spec driven development where you suddenly have this 20 30 000 line repository is it actually harder to recover from the fact that you missed some requirements along the way yeah. and is there flexibility sufficient in the workflow to be able to make up for that mm -hmm. um certainly some of the techniques i've tried have been things like injecting new backlog items to the end of a, a backlog to try and recover and still following the spec driven methodology rather than sort of bailing to vibe coding which is definitely a temptation but following the the methodology to sort of steer towards the the desired output um but it, yeah it's it's definitely tricky